Let's talk about the A6100. Hey everyone, Kwame here. Today I want to talk about the A6100 and why I think it's the best camera deal on the market right now. Um, I got I picked this one up this camera here with the 16 to 50 kit lens and the 55 to 210 kit lens so two kit lenses here and if you are just here to you know get my opinion on it this is the deal to get this is a great lens combination lens camera combination you will not regret it period for the rest of you, if you want to know more about the camera, uh, stay tuned. If I can figure out how to do this, I will add chapter markers to this video so you can just jump to the different sections of the video. So let's talk about what the A6100 is. It's an APS-C size censored camera from Sony. It's a 24 megapixel sensor, I believe. And it's the sensor size is smaller than the A7 II or any of the A7 lines. For a lot of people, getting a camera like this is way too much camera. If you're just getting into photography or if you're upgrading from a, like a cell phone and you want to take a little better pictures, getting a camera like this is not worth it. You might, this type of camera, this uh, A6100, they also have like the A6400, A6600. Those cameras are going to be the best cameras for you. I think the A6100 is probably the best deal though out of all of the A6000 lines. So they have the A6000, which is still sold. That's a six year, seven year old camera at this point. If you're getting into photography or you're upgrading from your smartphone, like I said before, you just wanna get better pictures of like a new kid or your family, you can get a camera like this, this A6100, and it will last you for years. I know people who are still using the A6000 to this day. So, and that's, and they got it, you know, a year after release. So six years later, they're still using the camera. This being an interchangeable lens, you can pop off lenses and then get different lenses for it. The nice part with that is you should always invest in the glass and then upgrade your camera bodies. So as you're getting better at photography or you're advancing and you want a different look or you're like hey these kit lenses aren't doing it for me you can always get better lenses to use with your camera and it's gonna make your camera feel brand new having said that the two kit lenses that I got uh, the 1655 16 to 50 I'm sorry 16 to 50 and the 55 to 210 they're excellent they are so good I was surprised at how sharp these lenses are for being kit lenses and if you are not looking to invest in any lenses for a while, you can get by with these two lenses pretty well and for a long time. Now granted, they're not gonna be the greatest in low light, but you can always pick up a like a, a 50 millimeter lens, pretty cheap, that's like a 1.8 aperture, so you can get really good low light, um, low light pictures. You can also find old NEX lenses, uh, the Sony NEX uh, line that doesn't exist anymore, but they will fit on the on this camera and they will work full autofocus and everything like that the other really nice thing about this camera is that it does shoot 4k so if you are going if you're a hybrid shooter or someone who wants to also dabble in video this is a great camera to start out with the all also the great part is like my sony a7 II, the screen flips up and out right so if you're taking pictures you can hold your camera down here take a picture no one sees you However, it also flips up and over. So if you're going to take a group picture or selfie or just film yourself, you can hold the camera like this and see what you're doing. It is so nice. I wish the A7 II that I have did that. Um, the screen on the back is also touchscreen, which is really nice. I keep I kept forgetting that this was touchscreen. So when I was fo trying to uh, set my focus points and things like that, I would always forget this was a touch screen and I could just touch it and take a picture. Uh, there are so many other features, like I'm not going to get into the technical specs, this is more, you know me, like this is more of a how does the camera work in real world and I really like this camera. It surprised me and it's become the camera that I go to for a lot of like the daily pictures around the house, if we go out on a walk, things like that. I'm bringing this camera. Uh, and 
depending on what I'm doing, I, I will sometimes bring both lenses. Like we're going on a walk at one of the local state parks. Uh, but if we're just going for a walk around the neighborhood, this uh, 16 to 50 kit lens stays on my um, stays on the camera. The interesting part with this one is if you're into video and you're going to be shooting a lot of video, it does have a power zoom. So you can zoom in like this like I normally would. Well, let me show you. So you can zoom in like this, right? And you're getting your, your zoom. Or you can use the power zoom here on the side and it will like slowly zoom in, slowly zoom out, that kind of thing. This camera is so small. This is truly with this lens or with my um, Samyang 24 millimeter lens. These, this camera is pocketable with like in a jacket pocket. So in the winter time, or if you have a light jacket on outdoors, you can easily fit this in a pocket. You can't. This is not going to fit in your back pocket or anything like that. But if you're going for a walk and you have a jacket on, you can easily fit that on there. If you are going to be walking and doing some vlogging type test, you can easily put it on this Joby pod, hold it out in front of you like this, and you're you're off to the races, right? You can sit out here, talk to the camera, do what you need to do. The 55 to 210 kit lens is surprisingly good. I, I was expecting for this lens to not be that good, um, but it is really sharp and it doesn't have very much chromatic aberration around the edges so if you're a lot of times on these telephoto lenses and especially cheaper telephoto lenses if you zoom in you take a picture and it's like uh, let's say you take a picture of a deer and the sun is behind the deer or something like that you usually get like purple fringing or something around the side i haven't seen any of that with this lens um actually i shouldn't say any i've seen it a couple of times but i was able to correct it really easily but it's not it doesn't happen a lot. It's not like my Panasonic uh, 45 to 200, I think it is. That lens, it it's chromatic aberration all the time. It was really, it's a really bad lens for that. This lens here is really good. And if you need, you know, more reach, they also make a 70 to 350, I believe, which is under a thousand dollars. So you're getting a really good reach. Personally, for me, this lens fits perfect with the a7 II. And the reason why is I've, I feel like full frame cameras are really good at, um, you know, a wider angle view. So if you're doing a landscape and you want a really wide angle or you're doing um, some kind of portrait work, I think these cameras are really good for that. And the APS-C size sensor is really good for telephoto work. The reason why that is is because the sensor in the A6100 is 1.5 times smaller than the full frame camera. So you're getting a little bit extra reach. The other really nice part for me is I can share lenses between the two cameras. Now, if I put this uh, 55 to 210 lens on my Sony a7 II here, it does go from a 24 megapixel image down to a seven megapixel image. So it's not worth it going down, but I can take my full frame can't lenses and it will work on the, um, a 6,100 here. And which is what is nice is it actually gives me a little bit extra reach. So this Tamron 28 to 200 that I have that I absolutely love and we'll be talking about in a different video is more like a 35 to, uh, I think it's like 35 to 300 or something like that. I will have the the right measurement somewhere around here. For someone like me who has a full frame camera, it's really nice to be able to have one set of lenses that will work between both cameras. They also share the same battery, which is good and bad, right? The battery on the a7 II isn't the greatest, but it does work with this camera here. So again, I can just share batteries, share lenses, and it, it just works for me. The camera is made out of plastic um you know it's not like cheap plastic but it is plastic compared to the a7 II, which is all metal or aluminum whatever it is but it's a, 
you, you can feel the difference in quality. You can get the A6400, which I believe, which I believe has a better build quality than the A6100. They share the same sensor and a lot of the same features. And then you can jump up to the A6600 if you're going to be doing more video. If you're really focused on video, I would say the A6600 is probably the one to get. I see these cameras go on sale all the time. So, you know, look for sales. I'll have links down below where you get the, mo the most updated price for this camera and lens combination. The biggest feature, the A6100, 6400, and 6600, like that whole line, is the autofocus. The autofocus on this camera is amazing. Like I've heard of Sony's autofocus and it's pretty good with the A7 II, but that came out five years ago, right? So it's an older camera. The autofocus on this camera is number one, reliable. I mean, super reliable. It, they also have eye autofocus for humans and for um, pets or animals. And it works so well, not just with like the dogs in the house, but if I'm out taking pictures of deer or bison or anything like that, it will lock onto the eye and you will get a good clean shot with the eye autofocus. Autofocus for me isn't just for amateurs who don't know how to manual focus. It's something I use all the time. I'm actually using it right now shooting this video. I do like having the, the knowledge and the confidence that if I point the camera at this, at whatever I'm pointing at, it's going to lock on to focus and lock on quick and hold on to focus. It's really nice. The autofocus in this camera really sets it apart from a lot of other entry level cameras. And I would say this camera isn't just for entry level people, right? I'm going to use this camera as a second B camera for my video shoot. So when I use my uh, Panasonic G9 for the main camera, but this will easily be a second camera and they both will shoot 4K. I can color match them and everything in post. It'll, it's just going to work really great. I highly recommend this camera with the two kit lenses. I think it is a great great value for what you're getting again you're going to be able to keep this camera for a long time well like with any of these cameras you can keep them for a long time you know it's the, the lit once you upgrade your lenses and you have a set of lenses that you like and works for you you can keep this camera body for a, a long time and just get better at documenting your lives your family life your lives if you want to go professional at some point you can learn on a camera like this and then upgrade to like the A6600 or even the uh, A7 line. At the end of the day, I think this camera is a great value and I highly recommend the camera. As always, I will have links down below to where you can see full resolution pictures of the images I took uh, with this camera on YouTube, it's hard to show how good the, the lens, the images come out, but I do have all the pictures that you can look at on my website linked down below. I will also have links to the camera uh, by itself, the kit lenses, and a couple other lenses that you, if you don't want to get the kit lenses right away, there are a couple other lenses that you could get uh, if you are more inclined to photography or videography video work. Thank you as always for watching this video. I do appreciate it, you guys. If you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. For a small channel like myself, it really does help me get seen and grow and all that good stuff. As always, thank you and I will see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye bye.